Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 12, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Cloudflare released a mobile app for Android and iOS to make its 1111 DNS resolver available to these platforms. Of course, the goal here is again to have a, an encrypted connection to these DNS resolvers. I haven't looked at the Android app. The way it is implemented for iOS is that Cloudflare actually sets up a VPN connection to Cloudflare servers and these VPN connections are then used for DNS. Sounds pretty slick, uh, but does not cooperate with any other VPN configurations that you may have running. So you can only use the Cloudflare DNS resolver if you're not connected to another VPN. Now, I don't have an Android device to test the Android version with, but I heard some reports that apparently it's asking for permissions to access the microphone and the camera. And this is apparently necessary if you're filing a bug report about the application so they can take a screenshot from your phone in order to help them with debugging. What is probably applicable is if you're traveling with your phone to a country where you are somewhat worried about your queries, your DNS queries getting intercepted, then you could use a tool like this. I would probably rather prefer a normal VPN. Haven't really checked yet on iOS if it just tunnels the DNS queries or if it tunnels all of your traffic. In the second case, of course, yeah, you get sort of a free VPN here really. It looks like the crypto coin mining game is getting more difficult and at least on Unix attackers are now using rootkits in order to hide their crypto coin mining processes. Up to now, it was pretty easy to spot crypto coin miners if you monitored the CPU load on your system, if it was high for an extended amount of time. Well, uh, then you can always uh, check which process takes up all the CPU time and that would then often lead you to the crypto coin miner. With this new miner that Trend Micro came across, it actually installs a rootkit component that will hide the crypto coin mining process. So you will no longer see it with standard system tools like PS or top. The way this rootkit component does it is by actually hooking into the system's read their API call. And in doing so, it's now able to block access to the proc directory that is used by the crypto coin mining process. The system tools that you typically use to identify processes, they do look at these proc directories. So if they can't see that directory, they will not display the process. Pretty neat trick, of course, it does require that the attacker has root access. Many crypto coin miners I have come across use a simple web application vulnerabilities and they typically, of course, don't have root access. But the other group that just uses simple passwords for root on the system, yes, they could easily use this root kit. So if you want to learn more about this, check out Trend Micro's blog. It looks like Google is making some progress with Android malware and essentially they sort of adopted a more tightly controlled ecosystem in order to accomplish that. One feature that apparently made a big difference is Google Play Protect. Google Play Protect will scan your applications and look for potentially harmful applications as Google calls them and then disable them or even remove them. Now, what apparently really made a difference here is sort of to automatically disable these applications and Google Play Protect will not only scan applications downloaded from the Google Play Store but also applications downloaded from third-party stores which of course has historically been the big sort of weakness of the Google ecosystem. 
Now, when this initially came out, there were some voices that, of course, didn't like the fact that Google sort of is able to remote control your phone and stop and uninstall applications. Google is trying to balance this now a little bit with an Android ecosystem security transparency report they're now releasing in order to essentially tell users what applications they killed and how effective this program was. Now, as part of this transparency report, Google also published uh, how much malware they found on different operating system versions. No real surprise here. The older the phone, the more likely it is infected. And uh, Google found about half a percent to 0.6% of phones to be infected if they're running Marshmallow or older. And of course, newer operating systems, in particular Pi, is as low as 0.06%, still a bit high for my taste, but certainly an order of magnitude better than the older operating systems. Of course, you may argue that the older operating systems just had more time to pick up malicious applications, so it may not just be new security features enabled in these new operating systems. Well, and this is it for today. If you missed my talk uh, for, during Besides Jacksonville this weekend, the slides should be online sometime next week, I guess, whenever I get around to send them to the organizers. Also today on Monday, I'll talk at the OASP group here in Jacksonville. So maybe I'll see a couple of you there. That's it and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.